recently, which has become the addition of a student council. Well, that wasn't there last year or the year before, quite a few years before that. And that came about because we had a mock congress in our social studies class. Ms. Chedister, who's now Mrs. Wall, um, had the students present some bills to a mock congress and come to me, the Senate, to get those approved and move them on through. And um, this was one of the bills that was successful, it was to create a student council. So I was wondering if Ms. Wall would come up here and just say a little bit about what they went through because we want to celebrate their exhibition of several of the Danville Diploma skills. The most important one I think that they showed us was first appearance. I didn't know I was going to have to talk. I thought it was just the kids, so I'm a little nervous. Um, we started it off because we were studying Congress, so we divided the kids up and I said, you get this many House of Representative members and this many, well, two senators per class, and they elected their committee leaders. And um, this group in particular really exhibited the damn diploma skills because they truly pushed it through excellent leadership and excellent critical thinking. I swear to them that I would not veto any of their bills. <laughs> and they had some interesting ones, but they vetoed each other's. And it was really, it was really great critical thinking because I was a little worried through some of them. We have one group who is a very great positive change in the school, and I'm going to let them take it from here. Um, but they are the ones that push through the student council. Critical thinking, problem solving, and really a lot of research. When they first came to see me about the project, I said, you have to do some research on student councils. Let me know what they do. Let me see if I can agree with this or not. So that's what they did. So tonight, we're going to present four kids, four students, with excellence and perseverance from Bay Middle School. And the first one is Colin Carver. Thank you so much for your help. And honestly, he is now also the newly elected president of the Student Council. Not only did he help get through. Just there right here. Okay, and the next person we'd like to recognize is Ian Funkhauser. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ian. Stand right up here by Colin. Let me get your picture. And the next one is Ellen McKinney, who could not be here tonight. Your father's here, well, I will not let him accept this in her absence, though. I don't want him in the picture, but I'll hold this for Ellen. <laughs> and the next person is Summer Quinn, who is here. And Summer is the newly elected vice president of the student council. Excellent job, guys. All three of you line up here, and we'll take a picture. Oh, you were 20 seconds in there. Okay. <laughs> Close then. All right, we won't do another one. <laughs> Thank you all. Excellent work. Okay. What was it there? Yeah, that's the clock. Good evening. I'm Haley Ralston. Some of you are looking at me like, who is this strange person? I'm the new assistant principal at Danville High School, and we have elected to recognize um, some sports teams this evening and one individual, and I don't think he's here because I saw him coming off of the football field a few seconds ago, but we wanted to recognize Stephen Ray as the Athlete of the Week for the Advocate Messenger, so we will make sure that uh, Stephen gets this uh, certificate tomorrow. And we also want to recognize the 14-15 girls soccer team, and of course they are not here tonight because they are playing in the regionals, yay, hurrah. Um, they are coached by J.D. Smith, and they are at West Jessamine tonight playing as we speak for 11 minutes now. I'm not sure what the score is, but um, nobody's texted me yet. But um, they're playing Southwestern in, is it the first regional? Does anybody since know? Since Since 2009. So we're very, very proud of those girls, and we're going to recognize them tomorrow at school and give them their certificates. And I'm going to... Well, oh, the GPA, yes. Um, they had a 4.02 GPA 
to earn uh, the sixth high school team academic award, award from the National Soccer Association. First in Kentucky and 23rd in the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. So yes, yeah, very good. They're, they're an excellent group of young ladies on and off of the field. And we also want to recognize the 14-15 boys soccer team. And I'm going to ask Coach Bowman to come forward and help me do that. And he's going to say a few words about this boys team, who is also very special. Um, this is our uh, 15th time receiving this award. Um, it's the 12th straight year. Um, our GPA was a 3.75, and um, actually our GPA since 2004 is a 3.76. Um, as I was telling Mr. Schultz right here, they, uh, I'm really glad the boys do as I say and not as I did. Um, <clears throat> we take a lot of pride in this, so we've had five Scholar All-Americans, and I think we have a good shot of, of getting one this year as well. Um, I would like for Gus Crow and Hayden uh, Block to please... Come up here and uh, join us. Uh, these are two of the guys. Uh, I, when I sent out the notice that we were being recognized, they all replied that they were going to go to the girls game and support them. And then we have some also uh, running cross country tonight. So um, it's something that we talk a lot about. We, do, we push it. And uh, I think they take pride in it just as much as I do. And um, this is a national award. Um, I, I, was going through and counting it. I think the girls were, what, 23rd? So let's just say we were 22nd in the nation. Uh, no, we were I know we were top 25. There were a lot of ties, so I didn't figure all those out. Um, but it's really good that, you know, um, since JD's taken over, he's um, filling out the paperwork. Because we have to pay to be members of this, and then we have to fill out the paperwork and do all that. So it's easy for us to do. We want to do it to get recognized. But it's glad, I'm glad JD's doing that as well. So we have... Both teams, um, I think there were 150, um, there's like 370 recipients and only 150 boys and girls teams out of the nation who both teams are getting this award. So I uh, really thank you guys for your hard work. Okay, um, last year's team was uh, Jose Angel, Omar Ayala, Hayden Boyd, Hayden Block, Gus Crow, Enrique Ellery, Michael Graves, Jalen Hendren, Connor Hill, Charlie Lynch, Danny McAllister, Tyler McGurr, Tyler Montgomery, Race Pellant, Jacob Rankin, Claudio Rodriguez, Matt Schroeder, Isaiah Scott, Safe Siddiqui, Corey Stieber, Isaiah Scott, Cole Verhoeven, and Nick Walker. Um, so that would be our 2014-15 boys soccer team. Thank you. Congratulations to everybody and thanks for being here tonight and um, for all those who couldn't be here, we appreciate their accomplishments as well. Um, next item on our agenda <coughs> is the District of Innovation Report. Dr. Will. Before we do that report, uh, this is that one moment in the meeting that uh, should you be here with a child and need to get home in order to do homework or rest. This is your, your, your attempt at, at the graceful exit. Uh, we will not be scoring. <laughs> I lied, we are in the middle of scoring. Uh, just kidding. Thanks for coming, folks. We have the opportunity tonight to hear from some of our schools regarding their Dambo diploma plans. Each school has been empowered to determine the best way for its delivery and effectiveness. We've got our elementary and middle schools here with us this evening to do just that. And we'd love to start um, with, let's see, did you all draw straws beforehand? <coughs> there you go. <laughs> then so be it. We'll go in order of age. Ron, Leo, if you all <laughs> like to arm wrestle to see who gets to go first. Leo, you're up. Thanks, I'll sir. Go first. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'll be presenting Hamzit's plan for the Dable Diploma Skills. Um, you have a handout in front of you. 
Um, what I did with the staff at Hogsett is we got together at a faculty meeting and I asked the teachers what, were the, what they felt would be the best way to cover all of these skills. So basically I got teacher ownership because they were the ones who chose um, which skills would be um, highlighted in each year uh, or throughout the year. Um, each um, skill has a designated grade level um, that you can see that are bulleted there. Um, to address the issues of mobility, um, the skills will be cumulative. In other words, um, once a skill has been introduced, they'll be, continue to be addressed in the upcoming grades. So that by the time you get to the bottom of that list, even though fifth grade only has one skill that is listed as highlighted for them, they will still be covering all of the previous skills from all the way from kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, students will show what they know and are able to do through a series of teacher designed activities and ass assignments throughout the year. If a student does not achieve mastery of a particular skill, remediation will occur on an individual basis and that will be that teacher's, from their homeroom, that teacher's responsibility. At the end of the school year, a reflective writing piece will be um, completed by each student and then kept in the student's writing portfolio. Um, and then finally, all of the Daniel Diploma skills will be highlighted in a culminating event, the Gateway presentation that all um, Danville Elementary students do at the end of fifth grade. Uh, that will serve as our documentation for the Danville Diploma skills um, to make sure that each has been addressed and reached to a level of grade appropriate mastery. And I, we particularly put grade appropriate mastery because we understand that um, the Danville Diploma skills will be an ongoing um, process um, ongoing skills that they will then continue um, at Bait and then Danville High School. So. Any questions for Ms. Wagazzo? Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, you all should have a handout uh, for our. Uh, Dan with diploma scale. I'll turn attention to the uh, back side that has, this is a document that's primary and intermediate, uh, has come up with ways that, to help the teachers under, show ways of actually going through the Dan with diploma skills. And we took it one step uh, further by identifying the seven healthy habits of highly effective uh, students in the, the last column. And I kind of defined each of those habits the first time. So if you see one, be proactive, it, it applies across the, the board. As you can see, many of those uh, skills actually go across numerous um, habits. And so on the other side, what we've, what we've done is we've taken, ultimately we're going to be using Mastery Connect. We have to uh, get some additional training on inputting um, our own standards and then substandards. So this is just an Excel document. You can see across the top each of the uh, habits. And under each of the habits are the Danville Diploma skills that, that are tied to that. And to kind of help with some of the coloring, is you, if you look at a team member, you can see that it actually is in four, five, and six. Um, so with this plan, as you can see, all skills are, are taught annually and throughout the school year as, as we actually address the uh, seven healthy habits, um, not only throughout the year, but every year, every grade level looks at paradigms and the way that students see the world. And, um, and then they actually focus on each of the habits one week at a time. And then they'll come back and actually be much more deliberate in integrating those through direct instruction as well as integrated uh, instruction in a three to four week period. So students coming in from other schools uh, will always have an opportunity annually to actually get caught up on the Danville Diploma skills as well as our he uh, ha healthy habits. Um, this year, what, we'll, what we're actually going to be looking at is we, we have uh, PBLs in third and kindergarten, uh, as well as uh, like Hogs with the Gateway interviews. Uh, third and fourth grades already started to collect data binders, um, which will help with a lot of these Danville Diploma skills. Um, 
finally, if we look at um, suggestions, we're actually going to be doing our follow-on training that started um, on the 26th of October. And on the 27th, our Lighthouse team will actually be doing some of the work of how we're going to integrate these throughout our entire curriculum. Um, and some of those suggestions for improvement or extensions are listed. Um, as you can see, most of it's centered around student-led activities, which is a leadership day that we would work toward in the spring. Discovery days, as some of them did that last year, and parent conferences focused around second and third grade, doing it at least once a year, leading their own parent conferences, ultimately with those data binders. And in fourth and fifth grade, it would be twice a year. Um, we're looking at developing rubrics for all those student-led activities so that they can actually have a self-evaluation based on what demo diploma skills there are, and uh, when appropriate, they'll have uh, peer feedback as well as adult feedback. Um, currently, we also have a, a job core, and we're looking at developing um, job descriptions and what skills fall under those, and doing an evaluation monthly on that. And so the other suggestion was to create a student digital portfolio, and that way when the students ultimately in a couple of years sit down with a gateway, they're not just focusing on two skills that they can be better at, or what they did well, uh, somebody on the panel can actually say, let's reflect on a certain skill, and they should be able to pull that up from their digital portfolio and show how they progressed as far as back as kindergarten to fifth grade. And this represents a marriage of the leader and me with the damn little palm skills, correct? Right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, we looked at the skills almost kind of looking, you know, as, as we were teaching them in the past, it was like it was a noun, it was something isolated as opposed to the habits just being more like a verb, who we are, and how, and, and letting people know that, the students know that this is actually, those skills apply to multiple habits and being a successful individual. Questions for Mr. Ballard? And, and this is for both you guys, let me to leave you out. Um, I was at Tolliver's Gateways last year, which was very interesting, and I, I, it was very impressive have these kids stand before three or four people they do not know or maybe they recognize and to talk about things that are important to them and what the how they want to succeed at, at bait so I thought that the segue into the bait situation was was very well done um, is there going to be coordination with all the elementary schools so that Essentially, the same skills are being presented um, at the gateways. I mean, is that something you guys are talking about? So there's some consistency. Yeah, Leo. If, if I could answer that, you know, um, they they will be consistent because, and and I know that this to be true for Jimmy Rogers as well. By the time we hit fifth grade, the emphasis will be on all of them to be addressed throughout the year. That's going to also help with the, our mobility to make sure that as students move in and out of our schools um, for whatever reason, that they um, are addressing the, the, all of the Naval Diploma skills. So yes, by the, by the end of the fifth grade year, all of the Naval Diploma skills will be addressed at each of the elementary schools. Okay. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Good evening. Be careful when you tell your principal you'll uh, do anything like to start. Thank you for drawing the short straw. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Kelly um, did have his surgery this morning and it was successful and he is doing well. So. She is up there with him and will be there for a while. So thank you all for listening to me. Um, do you have this? Do you need this? It's an attachment. Oh, thank you. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Um, Ms. Kelly wanted me to present tonight what Jenny Rogers decided to use um, for how we're going to look at the dental diploma skills in our building. Um, we kind of just broke down what we thought that kindergarten needed to start with to grow forward, building up to fifth grade. Um, what skills seem to be the easiest for primary versus intermediate, and then what skills seem to be appropriate for every grade level to apply at their own level. So we kind of broke it into the horizontal being 
individual grade levels are going to focus on those blue skills. That's going to be what they own that year. By the end of the year, the kids should know. You should be able to walk in the room and say, you know, what have you been doing to problem solve this year in my classroom? And then the green skills going uh, vertically, hopefully all kids will be able to communicate and present, persevere, exercise creativity, and um, demonstrate their leadership skills. So that's kind of how we saw those skills moving. Um, some skills seem to be applicable through all grade levels, and some seem to be uh, more appropriate primary versus intermediate. Um, we decided that um, all skills were going to be covered in every grade level just because we have a cute chart we're not going to necessarily stay within those lines. Um, grade levels have already kind of went outside those boundaries with some PBLs coming up with um, fifth grade I know. So we're not going to stay within this if, if there's a skill that works and we're going to go ahead and teach it of course um, if it's appropriate. But we are going to make sure that they can do these skills in these grade levels by the end of the year. Um, how they know, how the students will know what they're able to do. Um, we're working really hard this year to make sure that our rubrics for our project-based learning reflect our naval diploma skills and how they're being assessed um, and that our rubrics are more um, meaning for, meaningful for students. Um, we're also um, taking more time for students to <coughs> demonstrate the naval diploma skills um, outside of just their classrooms. We're trying to find other ways. Um, so far this year, it's kind of been our morning assemblies, our morning meetings, um, times where they can get up in front of the whole student body and do some presenting um, and kind of taking a different audience outside of their normal peers and their normal comfort zones. Um, let's see. When or what pattern will this occur? Um, we went over that. How will the school document by the end of fifth grade? Um, she said through our rubrics and of course by our gateways at the end of the year, which I know you all discussed and you'll have to talk to her a little bit more about that. And for student mobility, um, she's spoken with our coaches or our coach and she said that um, the coach would like to sit down with a new student to the Danville school system and show them as part of our introduction to our building and, and the tour of the school and what we're all about at Jane Rogers. Um, what these are and what it means for their specific grade level. We're also going to work on some parent involvement because parents may not know what these are. And when we say Danville Diploma Skills or when they're recognized in our assemblies, do parents really know what they mean? So we're going to try to do more, a better job of conveying meaning to parents and um, working with new students who move in to tell them what they are so they have a base knowledge. And of course, students who move across district lines should you know, around the district lines should already have an understanding, I think, of them. Do you have any questions? I feel like I can give you more specific examples, but <laughs> those are notes that she gave me. When a student, when you approach a student and mm -hmm. explain to them about the Danville Diploma, what do you tell these guys? I mean, because it, it could be overwhelming. Right. In third grade, I say, these are, like, I can teach you lots of things in reading and math and writing, but these are kind of some extra things that we have to learn. These are kind of some skills that when you leave school, nobody's going to tell you that you get an A at this, a B at this, a C at this, you're not going to get a grade on it, but this is going to make a difference in whether you get a job or not. And then they kind of get really interested. When we talk about um, leadership, how do you know, you know, do you want to get a job? We talk about um, when you are, um, I, I'm just thinking in my classroom, time management, when you're presented with a task, um, how do you know you're going to get it done on time? Um, how do you know that you are going to be able to work with someone because the person across the table says, I don't want to work with her. You know, I'm sorry. I didn't ask you to be friends. I just asked you to accomplish a task. Right. You know, and that's, if you can accomplish a task with someone that you really don't like or want to be friends with, then you truly are proficient at that skill. And that's, that's a huge step forward in life. You know, I say all the time, I don't, I don't have to like the people I work with, but I have to be a professional. I have to be able to, you know, come together as a team. We have to get the job done and complete it on time, you know, to the expectation of whoever we're turning it into. You know, and that's what life's all about. So hopefully, 
that's what we're building it toward. Okay. Sounds great. Any other questions? No. It's, okay. Does anybody have any questions? No, I've, all three of you guys, I appreciate the visuals. It's it's interesting to see how you organize things and kind of how you're going to work through it and, and helpful to have and it's it's uh, great the ownership of Thank you. We have a really big PLC meeting on this later this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Great job standing in. Thank you. I don't know. I know you all have this as an attachment. This I know I don't think you have. So you can, I'll just lay them on the table and pass them around. This is a two page handout. This is the attachment you have. And this is a single page example of a rubric. So that's something I know you don't have. You need a script. Oh, goodness. Yes, I do. Well, the good news for Bate Middle School is a lot of the heavy lifting is done at the elementary level. So when they come in the door, if they've been in, in Dambles, they know the 11 skills. At least they're fairly familiar. If they've come through their gateway project, they've got a good foundation. So that helps us out. So when we start talking about how to divide up the skills, it didn't seem right to just focus on perseverance, teamwork, and communication at sixth grade and select three. It just didn't make sense because they'd already learned them all to some level in the elementary schools. So we decided to take a little bit of a different approach. And it's... It's, it's a front and back handout, which I hope is clear, but <clears throat> basically what we're going to do in a nutshell is at the end of the year when they select a project for their PBAT presentation, we will score them on all 11 skills. And the, this is a sample of the rubric. This is just three skills on the rubric. But we're going to score them at the end of each year on whatever project they select, and they're going to tell us which skills that they want to focus on. They're going to select three or four skills per year in conjunction with their mentor. Each student has a data mentor, and they'll be talking with them throughout the year. You know, I think I want to use my Mr. Carney's project on Barbie Bungie and focus on teamwork, communication, and data analysis. And they'll be deciding that. So when they go into the PBAT for the presentation, they're going to tell their scorers, I'm focusing on these three. I'm hoping to be accomplished on these three skills. And so the interview questions that will be written out will focus on all 11 skill, skills, but we will still make sure we target severe deep questioning on the three that they want to go ahead and pass for that year. So that's kind of the structure we're going to use. So by the end of their eighth grade year, they will have been exhibiting all 11 through the three PVAP presentations they're required to do, one sixth, one seventh, and one eighth. So that in a nutshell is what we are going to do. Now, part of this is how do we teach the skills? That's how we're going to assess them, but how do we teach them? And so that's the top part of your first handout is we do in the weekly parent column, trying my best to make sure I get that demo diploma skill in every week so the parents know what we're going to be working on that week. Our Facebook page announces those, morning announcements every day we talk about them, afternoon announcements, and um, every other Friday we have students do self-reports on a particular skill and put them in a bucket during lunch and we draw them out for awards and prizes and read their comments at the end of the day. For example, show or explain to me how you uh, demonstrate perseverance this week. And most of them always say, in Mr. Carney's class, I demonstrated perseverance <laughs> because I studied for the test for six hours or whatever, because they always talk about Mr. Carney, the eighth grader, too. And um, so they report that every other week, and we save all of those. They're just kind of fun to save and go back and read. And we read them on the announcements, too. So that's one way we can teach them about the skills and not just assess them on the skills. So um, that's how we're going to teach them. We're going to assess them through the plan I described with the PBATs at every spring. Um, the pattern is the students will select three to four skills per year. So it depends on, you have to cover 11, so it's going to be three to four a year. They can pick more if they want. Um, how will the school document by the end of eighth grade? This is just an example of the rubric, but it's going to be cardstock, and it will have all 11 skills on it. And my, my ideal, my vision, my fantasy, is that these will be cardstock and will be kept with the student's data folder all three years so the scores can pull out the rubric and see well they were on uh, just developing or not evident for um, analyzing data last year so let's see how they're doing this year and kind of see where they were marked and kind of move their way up the rubric hopefully by the end of eighth grade year so um, that's the pattern they get to pick but we'll help them pick and we're going to target on those skills while we're assessing them during their PBAT and make sure they're progressing to where they need to be by the end of eighth grade and that's how we're documenting them now, the accountability for BAIT, I mean, sorry, the mobility for BAIT, there are no other middle schools here. So that's good for us. So the mobility we have to address are outside the district people that come in that might have never have heard of the Danville Diploma Skills. So what we do when they enroll in the school is we have a folder of information that we hand them out about our school-wide expectations, procedures, the schedule, all that kind of stuff. And we also have the Danville Diploma Skills listed in there with some descriptions. So we have to introduce the new students to those skills. 
So I just, we have a little timeline here on the back of your two page front and back handout um, that describes like if they come during the fall semester of sixth grade and they stay to the end of eighth grade, they got time to get all 11 of them done. Um, if they come the spring semester of sixth grade and stay until eighth grade, we're just going to require eight. And if they come in seventh grade before winter break, they have to do eight. If they come in seventh grade after winter break, we're just going to ask them to ex fully exhibit five skills. Not that they won't exhibit them to some extent, but we want them to exhibit fully at least five in a year and a half because that's all they will have in Danville. They might not have an opportunity to really in depth learn all of them. But if they could learn five, that would be great. So uh, I was asked, what are you going to do if somebody just can't make it? They've been there all three years and they're still developing on um, adapting and problem solving. Well, we're not going to retain a kid because of that. I don't really believe in retention anyway that is helpful to students. So what would we do? So in our original plan, we have nailed it down yet, but I would like for them to be followed to the high school with that being known as something they need to work on and just have the ninth grade, the ninth grade year is not heavily assessed by the state. So maybe perhaps we could work on that skill with them more in depth as ninth graders. But that's my vision for working with a high school's partner. So that's, that's our plan. I have a quick question for you. Sure. Just because I've done so many PBATs at Bay. Uh -huh. Sometimes I wonder if there couldn't be some kind of component that as an evaluator, you have a little feedback from what the teacher saw through the two month long process before they got to that actual PBAT. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I think, well, maybe they're not displaying this in front of me right now, but they might have been the biggest team player mm -hmm. in the whole classroom. And I don't have that information because I don't know that. So That's a great I idea. just wonder if this is part of a data folder and mm -hmm. it's only up to those evaluators mm -hmm. that they're just missing a little something that maybe teachers could give mm -hmm. some insight into and say, sure, you know, this has happened. That's a great idea. It's a little different this year because before we had all the kids do the same PBAT, like all the sixth graders did the, the car and the science PBAT, and all the eighth graders did in the domain and all that. Mm -hmm. We're changing it this year where they get to select a project they've worked on. Mm -hmm. And all those should be based on the project-based learning concept, and those should all be scored with rubrics. Mm -hmm. So those are content scoring situations where they will also be attached to Danville Diploma Skills, depending on the rubric. Those aren't all the same way. They need to be all the same way. They're not right now. But those rubrics that come along with the project that they select, they select Mr. Carney's Barbie Bungie project, they should bring with them the rubric that he assigned them. So you can see there how he did score them, as well as talk to him in person. Okay. But you could have that information of how they already scored and they presented that to Mr. Carney. In a sense, they're presenting one project twice. Once to their classroom teacher for content scoring and once for the panel for PMET. Okay. So it takes scoring. a little pressure off of the yeah. scores. Oh, definitely. And we need to have more training. And we now that we just have one rubric for all the PBATs, I think we'll be able to do a lot more in, specific and intentional and better training for the scores so they don't have to just walk in cold and not know what's going on. Yeah. That's our goal. We'd like to have some practice scoring sessions, make more reliable. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you. Okay. The high school is back before us at another point. They are working on the other components of the Daniel Diploma uh, as a way of creating the appropriate menu so that when a student walks across the stage to receive his or her graduation, that we're able to identify those students who have earned the Daniel Diploma, uh, which is going to be these skills plus the additional components uh, and a menu of options that is coming to reflect as well the way in which they are advising essentially credits and points towards uh, edge as well. So it's a series of different topics, it's a series of different areas, and a series of personalized choice and development uh, to therefore finally earn the Danville Diploma. And like I said, the high school's working on that now and we're aiming for something by Thanksgiving. That back. Okay. All right. Um, next on our agenda is the personnel report. There's an attachment in everybody's materials. Is there any uh, questions or anything you can review that um, later. The next item on our agenda is reserved for the public. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to address the board? You're used to seeing Norma Hopkins here, but I'm here representing the Danville Education Association and we would like to thank you in anticipation of you passing a resolution later on this evening that will be shared with the state legislature to fully fund the Kentucky teacher retirement system. So we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, John. 
Anyone else? Um, I'm Elaine Wilson Reddy, and um, the handout you all have in front of you is um, nothing new. Um, but I've been really curious about how Danville has progressed according to the state over the years, and I've never seen all of these years' numbers together. So I sat down at my computer. And I went to the Department of Education website and I pulled up each report card from each year. And on the front page, I only looked at reading. I did not look at any of the other subject areas. Um, and as I started looking at the numbers, I thought, wow, these numbers really don't vary a whole lot. Um, and at the bottom of each one of these blocks, the percent there is the number of students who did not meet proficient or distinguished for that year. So if you go all the way down to the bottom, for the, from um, 2006 to 2011 school years, 21.8% of elementary school kids did not make proficient or distinguished on their testing. 34.6 middle school students didn't and 43.8% high school students did not. That's a lot of students that have fallen off of the learning cycle. If you turn the page, this is when K-PREP started, so the data is a little different. I looked at reading for middle school, for elementary school and middle school, and then I looked at the English 2 scores for high school. And you'll notice that from 2011 to 2015, even though, you know, I know that at the work session last week and when all the, the scores came out, there was a, a, a big scare thinking about what the numbers are and that we're in the bottom 10% and that we're a focused district. The numbers really aren't that different from what they have been in the past. And um, Mr. Harp and I have had a, a conversation about this and I've talk to um, some other people about this and I think that after watching, I watched the video from the work session from last week, I wasn't able to be there and um, I heard people talk about what a special district gamble is and it is. Um, I have a stepdaughter that's a junior at Moorhead and she's there because she graduated from Danville and she loves being an alumni. Um, out in the community as many of you know there's amazing pride about having graduated from the Danville High School and from the Danville District. But if we look at this, about half the kids who graduate from Danville are not getting what they need. And it didn't just happen last year. This has been going on for a lot of years. So as we progress, I think it's really important to keep these numbers in plain sight and to know that this crisis that we're currently in is not new. It's been continuing since at least 2006. So that's what, nine years? <coughs> Something like that, yeah, nine years. Um, we talked about the, you all talked about the high school schedule at the work session. And there was concern that the schedule is not meeting the needs of some of the students who need more attention. These numbers say that. There are a lot of people in this room who graduated from high school and had six classes every day and didn't have to do A, B, 
and still went to college and still were successful. If your child can go to college, they can figure out the college schedule when they get there. But there are students who need that consistency of having class every single day. And it's not fair to those to sacrifice them for the ones that are going to get it no matter what. I heard someone say, but teachers don't want it and parents don't want it. Sometimes we just have to do what's best for the students, whether the teachers and the parents want it or not. Dr. Look is the parent. Sometimes the parents just have to tell the kids, I'm sorry, you may not want it, but this is what's best for you. And in hearing talk about the, the principals talk about the Danville Diploma, they were talking about being professional and working together as a team for the best, for what is good for the students. I hope that when you all get down to the bottom of this agenda tonight and that secondary curriculum instructor is there, I hope it's a unanimous vote for it. Because at some point it's time for this group to do something for our students instead of talk and instead of wait. We've been waiting. We've been waiting since January. It's time. You all are responsible for the success of our children. You all need to throw everything at them that you have. Every penny, every personnel, every ounce of energy you have. And if Dr. Look asks for something, he had best get it for the best thing for our children. Otherwise, what you're saying is you're not supporting him, and ultimately, you're not supporting our children. And that's not fair either way. Look at these numbers. 50% for a long time have been graduating without the skills they need. It's time to do something drastic. It's time to change the way we do things in Danville. Because we're not the Danville that we were. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the board tonight? All right. Next item on our agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as submitted. Second. No, that's all right. We have a motion and a second to approve the September 14th and September 21st meeting minutes. Are there any questions? Um, all in favor of the motion is stay and say aye. Aye. Um, all opposed? The motion passes. Next item is the financial report. Ms. Campbell, well, let's get a motion. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve the financial report as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Campbell. Okay, and I will um, point out that on the financial statement, I have just discovered that I didn't copy and fill correctly on prior year numbers. So um, I can bring a corrected one uh, next month if you need me to. Over on the prior year, that very bottom number is five million and does it match the other two? It is reconciled last year though, but I just didn't get a copy to build correctly. But um, this year compared to last year, uh, currently we have 6.2 million in the bank and last year we had 6.1 um, in the bank. And then you can see the breakdown there. I do wanna cover just a couple of balances. Capital outlay cash is showing um, negative 82,000 and that's because those funds have already been moved out to projects and so those funds will come in to the State Department to make whole. Uh, the same with FSPK building fund cash is showing 40,000 negative. Those funds have already been moved out for projects and or debt service and the state funds will come in for that. On um, the expenditure report, I just wanted to call attention to a couple of items. Um, because we're showing 446,000 in expenditures this time compared to last year, greater than last year. And so I just wanted to point out why that is. Our Kismet assessment that we paid in August was greater than the amount we paid last year. So there's several factors. We have already paid for one of our buses and this time last year we had not. Our KTRS increase 
the percentage amount that the board contributes is greater this year than it was in prior year, and then the salary increases as well. And then if you recall our district insurances and work comp insurance, premiums were greater than the prior year. Um, but of course, some of those funds were already set aside for the buses, um, for the kids, but amount that has been paid and that was moved in and then for the buses. So those funds have been reserved. Um, but just by way of note, you know, we have made a concerted effort this year to bring down some of our beginning balance and so that will continue to kind of be the trend where we have greater expenditures this year than prior year. Um, our tax bills were mailed this past Friday. So we even had some folks come in this morning. We had somebody show up at 8 o'clock. Wow. <laughs> Wanted to get it paid. The building fund then, well, just as a review, it was passed with no petition. There were no comments even brought to the county clerk's office, no inquiries. So that is on the tax bill. And we will be collecting the building fund nickel revenue this year. So that's all the comments I have about the financial statements, unless you all have questions. Any questions for Ms. Kim on this? <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the finance, financial report submitted. Um, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, the motion passes. Next item on the agenda is payment of invoices. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve of the payment of invoices totaling $485,312.82 as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Campbell, any? Just a few comments because we're in construction mode on several different projects, so that's the reason for our increase in uh, bills. We paid out the final roof payment um, to Melson on the Bait Roof Project. We uh, paid for the HVAC units for Hobbit this month, $20,000. We've paid out to Ross Tarrant during this month, $43,000, and that was for all four projects, a uh, total of $43,000. And then to Tennis Tech for track and tennis, we paid out $96,000 for both of those projects. And then we have had one expenditure for the new bus, um, one of the buses, and the other one we should pay for this month. I didn't check with Mr. McKinney. Did that one come in yet? Did the second bus come in? It has not. It has not arrived. So we hope it will come any day. <clears throat> Are there any questions for Ms. Campbell about the invoices? We have a motion and a second to approve the payment of invoices. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is change order number four for the DHS track project. Is there a motion? Um, I move that we approve the change order number four associated with BG 15-283 track resurfacing as submitted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. McKinney. Any questions about that? Was, um, we didn't add pavement on the long jump and in the triple jump area uh, in the pole vault because it was going to raise the we'd have to mill it down if we're going to repave that so we'll be doing that in about 15 or 20 years we'll let a lot of other folks handle that when <laughs> that time comes um, it was just going to raise the lip too high so it would create a trip hazard kind of take the issue and those um, those surfaces were good enough to go ahead and put the rubber back over, so nobody will be able to tell a difference as far as performance goes, but it'll be a little bit less high. Okay. So we got a, we got some money back on that. All right. Any questions on change order number four? We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next is on the agenda is change order number five for the DHS track project. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve of change order number five associated with BG 15-283 track resurfacing and cement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Mr. McKinney. That's a drainage area around the, you come out our home lock, our <coughs> teams come out of the locker room in that corner of the track. Um, so I, I'm, I'm always get, I don't want to talk about northwest and southeast and all that because it's, it's confusing me. But in that corner, is where there's a little where we we had to add some asphalt in there to make it go to 400 meters we got real close there on the the high jump pit and the tracks pretty close there created a little bit of a valley so we got a drainage area in there that looks pretty simple but tends to be a little more expensive fix than it 
looks like. You wouldn't think it would be $2,600 or so, but it is. So hopefully that will alleviate that any problems we have with drainage in that spot. Okay. Any questions? So the, the change orders that we've had so far, my understanding is that they kind of keep us still within budget as far as contingency and all the rest. So we, 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 we are we within is, budget. We had to, and, and we kept this inside the projects. We had to tunnel. We had to trench out in between them. We had to cut two trenches for the play clocks, for the football play clocks. That was kind of uh, not known at the beginning of that project. So we added that back in. So I, net wise, I think we're still inside the project numbers. Okay. That was one little extra thing we added. It, no, we, we didn't have a contingency for really. But. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve change order number five. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Kett's offer of assistance. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve the CAPS 2015-2016 first offer of assistance in the amount of $14,668. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, Ms. Campbell. And just by way of explanation, our CAPS offers of assistance, um, we have been getting two a year. I think it looks like we're going to get three offers this year, and it will total somewhere in the neighborhood of $40,000 for the full year. So that's a dollar for dollar match. If the board puts up the money, the state matches it dollar for dollar. And typically, Mr. Gober uses this to keep up our infrastructure. So it's not necessarily classroom pieces, but it's all the guts behind it that keep everything working. So our first offer is $14,668. It is in the budget. Um, so with this approval, if you all pass this, then the subsequent offers that come are automatically approved and because they are in the budget. So we have $40,000 in the budget for the offers this year. Okay. Any questions? All right, we have a motion and a second on the cats. Offer of assistance. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda for which we've already been congratulated is the um, KTRS support resolution. Is there a motion? Make a motion that we support the KTRS uh, resolution as submitted. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions from anybody? Um, all in favor then of the motion in the state say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all for bringing that to us. Um, next item on the agenda is staffing. Uh, is there a motion? <clears throat> Make a motion to approve of the staffing update as submitted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the staffing update submitted that looked like a pretty lonely report. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, would you like to tell us about it? Yes, sir. These are two instructional assistant positions at Tolliver Elementary uh, that our council has asked to have created. Okay. And that's with federal funds? Is that what it um, It's title? school funds. I believe title. it's title. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion is that it's aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda is the director of secondary education position. Is there a motion? I move for the approval of the director of secondary education position and also the job description that has been submitted. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any questions? We'd had a conversation at length at the work session about this, and Dr. Wilk had sent us, based on some of the comments at that meeting, a job description on Friday, which we've all had a chance to review. Any more questions anybody has at this point about this? We have a motion and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't really have a question. I just feel like I, I kind of need to maybe ex explain <clears throat> what's going to be my decision. Um, as everybody knows, this has been a very long discussion regarding what to do with this position, how we want it to look, what we want it to look like. Um, we've put a lot of thought, I know Dr. Luke has put a lot of thought and, and effort into to making this position um, what he feels is best for the district. And I just feel like at this point, I have to just kind of publicly say after hearing and talking to numerous parents and teachers, 
um, I feel like I have to be their voice, and I feel like I have to say that I I feel like we would have, we would best be served if we had someone in the schools in Bay and in Denver High School having an individual in each school versus someone at central office. Um, I think just some of the comments and feedback I got from most of the teachers felt like that it would just be so beneficial to them to have someone in the school on a daily basis working alongside with them every day um, you know for the teachers and the and the students as well um, and just felt like that that was probably the best way to use the resource um, so I just kind of feel like I'm, I'm that voice for them at this at this point in time okay. any questions we have a motion and a second to approve the Director of Secondary Education position. All in favor of the motion to say, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All opposed? Say no. No. Motion passes. Um, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda, which based on our modification of the, the agenda does not include 14A. So we're talking about four, items 14B and C. Is there a motion? Make a motion that we approve of all consent items as presented. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion to state say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Um, I understand we have no need for an executive session tonight. Um, so the last item on the agenda is to adjourn. Is there a motion? I move that we adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor of the motion to state say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight. And um